here on the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, we're hearing a, from the beginning of Christ's earthly ministry. Our Lord walks into the synagogue in Nazareth and opens up a passage from Isaiah, specifically Isaiah chapter 61. If you ever want to read the full prophecy in all of its context, chapter 61 of Isaiah is in that third part of the book of Isaiah. And it contains some of the promises of our Lord. And here he announces to everyone there present, today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And we know that that is a signal of the inauguration of his earthly ministry here at the, the very beginnings. I've actually been to this synagogue in Nazareth um, it's still there. Of course, the walls and the ceiling have had to be replaced over the years, but the overall outline um, and the, some of the foundation stones still remain. What really struck me about this synagogue where our Lord is proclaiming this is how small it was. It's probably about maybe a quarter of the size of this church. Maybe if you took like just the area of this sanctuary, and then, and then that was it. That was the whole building. And so our Lord says, today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And when he says that, everyone who is present would have been able to hear him perfectly, you know? It was such a small, confined space. Nobody would have had any doubts that he, he was saying he himself is the inauguration of this prophecy from Isaiah 61. He is the completion of the promises of God. We know that he begins that in his earthly ministry, and he completes it with the gift of salvation. Because of our Lord's life, death, and resurrection, he has given us the chance of salvation. He has opened up to us the possibility of that resurrection into new life. And so he is the fulfillment of this. And yet even during his earthly ministry, he gave us glimpses, miracles over and over again, bringing glad tidings to the poor, recovery of sight to the blind, letting the oppressed go free. Miracle after miracle, little hints, foretastes, of what salvation will bring. I want to th think about those who were there in that synagogue, in that little synagogue, who all heard from our Lord. They served later as the eyewitnesses, which Luke mentions at the introduction of the gospel. I love this introduction. It was like my third year in seminary or something. For some reason, this this part really struck out to me, and I spent the rest of the semester reading everything I could in our library just on this little paragraph. He begins his gospel with almost a statement of intention, like an explanation as to how it was that he came about to write this gospel. It's different from, for instance, John the evangelist, who was also an apostle of our Lord, who was with him. And so John was writing from his perspective. But here, Luke has a very different approach. Luke says that he is undertaking to compile a narrative of the events that have just been fulfilled among us. And he says what he's doing, his project is going around to the eyewitnesses, those who, were, who, those who could testify to Christ, who were there and saw and heard him, and then he's writing down and compiling all of those testimonies. What I think is really powerful to reflect on is that all of those stories that we heard about during Christmas, especially many about the early life and infancy and childhood of, of Christ that are just found in Luke, where would he have gotten those from? Think about that. Who was he interviewing? After all, that is what his gospel is. It's a compilation of interviews. So who did he interview to find out about the early life, the birth, and some of those early episodes? Uh, for instance, like in the stained glass window we have here, the presentation of our Lord in the temple as a child, or the finding of Jesus in the temple, like in that window over there. 
St. Joseph, at that point, after uh, the, the resurrection of our Lord, St. Joseph had already passed away. So we know that it must have been the Blessed Mother who our Lord, who St. Luke interviewed to learn about the life of our Lord. The Blessed Mother was the one who told him about those things. She was the eyewitness that he's talking about here at the beginning of the Gospel. Wow, that, that gives a whole new light to those stories we were reflecting on just during Christmas, right? You know, the Blessed Mother is famous for not having too many speaking parts in the Gospel. You know, do whatever he tells you. Uh, those, those speaking parts were, are very, in, in quotations, are short. But I think she has a great amount that she has shared with us through that interview that she gives with St. Luke, all of those beginning narratives. But of course, it wasn't just the Blessed Mother that our Luke, that, that St. Lord, blech, I'm sorry, <laughs> that St. Luke interviewed. In fact, he was a traveling companion of St. Paul, and it was because of that that he was able to go around the whole Christian world and do all of these interviews. Uh, Luke is the same author as Acts. He wrote those, the book of Luke and Acts at the same time. And um, we see in it, sometimes he says, we went here and we went there, meaning him and St. Paul. Here's a little excerpt about their journey to Jerusalem. After these days, we made preparations for our journey, then went up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea came along to lead us to the house of Nassan, a Cypriot, a disciple of long standing, with whom we were to stay. When we reached Jerusalem, the brothers welcomed us warmly. The next day, Paul accompanied us on a visit to James. He's talking about James the Apostle. And all the presbyters were present. He greeted them and proceeded to tell them in detail what God had accomplished among the Gentiles through his ministry. So it's fascinating. What we see there is that Luke is traveling with Paul, in this case, to Jerusalem. And there he meets St. James, the apostle, who of course was another apostle with our Lord. And then he gets to meet all of those other eyewitnesses. Surely this was a, a, a major part of where he got all of those testimonies. So I bring all of this up to say that when we read the Gospels, when we read the Bible all together, what we're reading is a collection of all of these different accounts of what God has done for someone. Each and every one of those words is someone having an encounter with God and how God changed their lives. When the bishop was here for our St. Paul Street Evangelization Conference, my homilies on the weekends were about the power of testimony. And the focus of that homily was about how important it is for us to share our testimonies with others and how that can change people's lives and how to prepare for our own testimonies. Today, I want to look at it from the other perspective, though. We often are the beneficiaries, the recipients of other people's testimony. And this is a feature of God's church. This is why God has the church as the instrument of salvation, that we must belong to a community of believers. It's not enough just to be us alone by ourselves. And I think this is intentional. This is not a, this is not a bug, it's a feature of the church. God intentionally founded the church this way so that we can see how he works, not just individually in our own life, but how he has worked in the life of so many saints who have gone before us and how he is working right now in the life of the whole community, all of the other believers. I think this is something that could be really encouraging and inspiring to our own faith. When we feel like there is maybe something lacking 
in our spiritual life or lacking in our own life when we feel like maybe perhaps we have the temptation to think that we've exhausted all of the, the avenues of the spiritual life and, and there's nothing more that we can receive or to learn or something like that. Just remember how many other people there are out there that God is working in their lives too and how very different their stories are from us. We can be edified by that as we are, of course, edified by all of the testimonies that we hear in Scripture, which is a compilation of those eyewitness accounts, as well as uh, of all of the saints who have gone before us. Brothers and sisters, we're not in this alone. We're part of a church. Our Lord intentionally founded it this way. You know, we know from this Scripture passage today that he knew how to read, right? Right? Our Lord picks up the scroll of Isaiah 61 and, and reads it out word for word. So he could have, if he wanted to, written out a whole gospel of his own, you know, the gospel of Jesus. But he chose to found the church on his people, his disciples. He chose to have these eyewitnesses be the ones to continue to spread the word and the testimony and it continues to be that way to this day. So let's be open to that. Not just in our own little narrow perspective, which is important to med meditate on what God has done for us. That's all good. That's important. But then also be open to see how God has worked in others' lives throughout history and even here and now. God has so much to show us. Let us be open to those eyewitnesses.